Hi, and welcome to my review of the Once Upon a Broken Heart duology by Stephanie Garber. If you're new here, hi, I'm Monica, and I make bookish content here on YouTube. And if you would like to give me a big thumbs up and hit subscribe if that sounds a little bit interesting to you. And today I'm going to be reviewing the duology Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. So this is the first book. And the second book is The Ballad of Never After. But before I get into today's video, I do have a little disclaimer. Everything that I'm saying in this video, you should take it with a grain of salt. Everything that I say is not the end all be all to declare if a book series or an author is good or bad. Everyone's entitled to their own opinions. And I do acknowledge that there may be some controversies surrounding some book series or authors. And I do welcome friendly discussion in the comments down below. Anyways, I do like to call these type of review videos worth the read because I'm determining from my own personal opinions and experiences with whatever I'm speaking about on that video if it's worth your time to invest in and read. And before I get into a quick summary of this duology, I do have to mention that I did upload a reading vlog of The Ballad of Never After, which is full of spoilers, and I'll link that up in the eye above and in the description box below if you're interested. So what is Once Upon a Broken Heart about? We're following Evangeline, who is a hopeless romantic, and she has a knack of getting into trouble. And she also has rose gold hair. When the love of her life is set to marry her stepsister, Evangeline gets a little bit desperate and she makes a deal with an immortal, Jax, the Prince of Hearts. So in this video, I will be going over my own overall reading experience with this duology. I'll go a little bit in depth with the characters and also diving into the romance and magic. And I'll conclude with whether or not you should pick up this duology or not. Anyway, let's get right to it. If you haven't read a book by Stephanie Garber before, just be prepared to be dragged into the most magical world ever. And although this world can be magical, you have to be cautious with the fates that can be quite dangerous. Her writing definitely pulls you in, and this series is more of a fantasy romance, I would say, but it is more so in book two than book one. The writing is descriptive and very lush, and you can't help but to fall in love with the characters that Stephanie Gerber brings to life. The plot in Once Upon a Broken Heart is quite easy to follow, but you do need to pay attention a little bit when there are mentions of fairy tales, legends, or myths, since they include important details for the main plot. But I really do love how the author did manage to weave in within these fairy tales and stories really important plot points and how it's told in a really unique way. And you need to prepare yourselves because there are really unexpected twists and turns in this series and you will not be prepared. Taking place after the Caraval trilogy, this one is now set in the northern kingdoms of this world and we are learning a new set of myths and legends. And the world itself is full of curses that our characters are trying to find their cure to. And there are multiple different curses that we encounter with our characters. I absolutely adore the characters in the world. There are ones that you love and then there are ones that you hate. But each character has a unique and distinctive personality that makes them really easy to distinguish from one another. And sometimes I have trouble distinguishing people from one another if they're so similar. Onto Evangeline, who is someone I would describe is a hopeless romantic and she is one that loves love. Although Evangeline, she does dream of a true love that lasts forever. That does come with her being sometimes overly naive, especially in book one. Even though when there's pieces of information that's presented to her, that proves that someone might not be trustworthy, she still continues to doubt. However, this part of her personality does get a lot better in book two, and she becomes a lot more assertive and taking matters into her own hands, which I really, really love for her. And she does become more cautious, but Evangeline does have a huge heart and she does like to give people second chances. And that does lead us to our second main character, who is Jats, the Prince of Hearts, the Immortal Fate, who was also featured in the Caraval trilogy. And having Jax again in this duology, I was so happy to see him again in his crazy antics. He's cold-hearted, he's morally gray, we don't know what he's going to do next, so he's quite unpredictable. But as a fate, he still has a charming quality about him. He's also 
sometimes always dress quite disheveled, but like artfully disheveled. <laughs> and with his morally gray nature, you do see him act kind of untoward towards Evangeline and not so nice towards her, but you do see signs of him actually caring for her, which I really loved spotting. Jax is like the morally gray villain that us readers love and want to fall in love with, and Evangeline does that. Also, we do learn more about Jack's origin and where he came from and his magic itself, but I did want some more clear answers from that, but I was really happy with what we did get. And with being a fate, Jax is quite that immortal that has lived for a long time. He's cold and distant, so it doesn't make sense for his personality to be this way, and I think Evangeline does try to give him the benefit of the doubt, but with Jax, he's a little bit difficult to warm up to. I wanted to jump in really quickly and just say what I thought about the Jax POV in the Indigo exclusive edition of Ballad of Never After. And the scene that we did get is just another perspective of a scene that's already from Evangeline's point of view, but now it's from Jack's point of view and we get to dive into his thoughts and feelings. But mainly Jax continues to reiterate that he is the cold and distant immortal fate and that everything that eventually you may think he's doing for her, he's not really doing it for her, it's for his own motivations. And uh, Jax also mentions that eventually may be a little bit naive for believing so much in Jax in being a good person. But he also mentions that he likes to tease eventually and that's basically it. It's a really short scene. It was a really nice sneak peek into his head and I do want to see more of Jax in the future. Okay, back to the actual review. I do want to mention some side characters that I really liked in this book. Even the ones that I didn't particularly like as a person, but I think each side character did add some richness to the plot itself. So first off, we have Luke who was Evangeline's first love. It's interesting to see how Luke evolves in each book and the circumstances that he finds himself in. Next up, we have a fate, Apollo. His character has somewhat a twisted role to play in the story, but I really did like how he is in the book and we have Lala who is another fate and I really like her enthusiastic personality and also her story is really sad like her backstory is sad but I really liked when she popped up on the page and although she may have questionable motivations but I still really like seeing her in scenes. On to the romance so our main romance is Evangeline and Jax and this couple was very entertaining to read about. You want them to get together, but Jax warns Evangeline that he's not one to be a person to fall in love with, and she refuses to believe him, and that dynamic was just so good to read. There was a lot of flirtatious banter and flirting throughout the two books, which I always love seeing. When the moments come when these two are together and also alone, I just love when they drop hints of something that might be brewing between these two and I just ate it all up. But I do have to warn you, the ending of these two is bittersweet. But honestly, I would say it was worth it to make it through these two books to see how these two come together. And the magic in this world is something that I always love. And although it might be hard to describe because each fate who are the magical beings in this world they all have their own distinctive powers and abilities, so, and their magical abilities is like tied to a legend, myth, or fairy tale. It is complex and there are multiple layers to the magic and there's also curses in this book, but I really like how the magic is involved with prophecies and also breaking the curses. And the magic itself is definitely an aspect that I would go back and read this duology and learn more on more read-throughs than I did on my first one. Okay, finally, what did I think about Once Upon a Broken Heart duology? If you haven't guessed already, and I usually do make videos on books that I like, and this was one of them. So I do have to declare the Once Upon a Broken Heart duology is worth your time and worth the read. 
to invest in, especially if you love fantasy romances and really great romance interests. I had so much fun reading the series with its drama, magic, and romance. And it really did remind me of the Caraval trilogy. And this duology is everything that I want in a YA fantasy, which is like a well-crafted world with really nice magic systems, um, characters that you can love, and like a romance that you cheer on and just want to watch progress. So I do highly recommend this series if that is something that you want. I think that's everything that I want to say in this video. I didn't really go so much in depth. I think I went into enough depth. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all had a wonderful day. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Hit subscribe if you want to see more of my videos and also ring the bell if you want to be notified. And I'll see you all guys in my next video. Bye!